Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to just talk, uh, I've got 10 minutes, so I'm, I'm going to be a bit quick. Uh, and uh, I'm going to talk about, um, first of all, about uh, the challenges of the situation, the present system, which we heard a lot about this morning in the film. And then the opportunity that, uh, the opportunities that are created by that system and how we can do something about it. And um, what this involves in terms of investment, who benefits from it. And uh, to start off with, I mean, the, the real problem that we face is, as Helena eloquently pointed out this morning, the um, strength and power of corporations, multinational corporations around the world, which is typified by what is going on at the moment with Monsanto and Bayer coming together, taking over the uh, phosphates uh, business and uh, resources. They're seizing resources. They're getting more and more influential. That merger that they're discussing now, I see that the advisors alone are being paid 280 million for their advice on this <laughs> merger, which gives an idea of how the scale of things has changed and how difficult it is for us to do small scale things. Um, but they're even more problematic are their disciples in the government. And here we have to grapple with DEFRA and um, it's interesting that DEFRA came out with a report last uh, year, just August last year, which was called uh, Towards a One Nation Economy, a 10-point plan for boosting productivity in rural, rural areas. And it's 20 pages long and describes these 10 points, which are quite sensible points. But there is no mention virtually at all food, farming, uh, anything to do with farms and the production and processing of food, which is quite an achievement to be able to write about that subject without actually mentioning farmers. Uh, so that gives an indication of what we're up against. The thinking behind that is presumably farming is not for you folk, it's for big companies to take over. And this is, of course, exactly what is happening. And they're degrading the soil, they're poisoning everything that's alive, uh, with chemicals, uh, it's an energy intensive form of farming, it's totally unsustainable and yet DEFRA and the, the general opinion promotes that kind of agriculture and treats organic as if it was some sort of minor little hobby that some people have and yet that is the only sustainable way of going forward. The, the result is that the farms are growing larger and larger scale this country now has the largest average farm size of any country in Europe. Uh, the farmers, the average age of farmers is rising every year. It is now up, I think it's nearly 60, which gives you an idea of the, the, the rate at which farms are being given up by people who are too old to farm them. Their children can see that it's very difficult to make a living on a farm nowadays, unless it's over a thousand acres, and land is costing around 10,000 an acre for um, agricultural land. And that means that if you happen to have uh, 10 million or so in your pocket, you can start farming. But otherwise, it is very, very difficult. And this is where the opportunity arises, because by chance, I was uh, lucky enough to meet uh, a representative of a very rich family in Europe who sold out from their big industrial holdings and want to invest in long-term, 100-year investments. And they said to me, what we like is small-scale farming, is the, exactly the kind of farming that the Rail Farming Conference, the Oxford Rail Farming Conference tries to foster. How can we spend money, invest money, on a 100-year scale in this kind of farming? And it's actually quite difficult to see at the first sight how you can do that. They're talking about starting off with small projects of 10 million or so. Uh, and that is slightly out of the scale of small scale farming. So we thought about it and I was involved earlier in a, a project called a Televillage in Wales and with a partner of mine and we built a, a, a <coughs> it was only 40 houses uh, a 40 house uh, development in Crick Howell. And the idea was that people could work from there and have workshops and offices 
uh, small workshop office uh, available on the site. But it created a community of people who otherwise would be completely isolated, but because they were all working from home, they could all meet and have a community. And the housing was developed in a way that was very attractive with keeping cars out and uh, all local materials. And the houses, if you go to Craig Howe, they're selling at a premium, I believe, or almost double what they would be if they were outside the community. So we thought, well, why not extend that to not just being a televillage, but also having land available so that people can have small holdings, anything between uh, five, uh, well, a lot, allotment size, right up to 10, 50 acres. And so um, I did a paper about it and suggested that the best form of investment is in land and housing. And both of the, well, the land is in short supply, housing is in short supply. So if, if you can combine the, the availability of land and housing, you will facilitate a very large number of young people in this country who actually want to get onto the land. They'd love to have an opportunity to grow food and to process it, get involved in the food business altogether, and to have a part of a community, but also be back to nature and have some contact with the land. And so we thought, well, this could be a way to facilitate it because we could satisfy the investor and at the same time provide an opportunity for all these people who are straining at the leash to get involved and do something which is really useful. So we've found uh, a place with, in North Devon, which is um, uh, a 6,000 acre estate that belongs to somebody who actually happens to be a friend of mine uh, by chance, uh, literally by chance. And um, he's mad keen about it. He most of the time is demonstrating against GM, so he's just got his heart in the right place. And uh, so he's decided that he would like to set aside a 250-acre farm. And the buildings on it are anyway a bit clapped out. So he uh, would be delighted to develop about 25 acres of that. And we're planning to build about 120 houses there. It's very close to another, oh Lord, <laughs> uh, well, I can't go into great details about it. Anyway, it, it does look as if it's going to take off. And the idea there is that what we would like to do is this would, could be a pilot project which would show uh, what can be done. And the key factor in it, of course, is getting planning permission. And one of our little team that we've got together to do this is a very experienced planner. And he is planning to make the sort of a proposal which is impossible to refuse, even for a planner. And uh, he knows very well, because he's trained most of the planners in southwest England, uh, that he knows what they're looking for. And we're hoping that if we can produce a, a, a sort of uni a unique selling point in being able to gain planning permission, this can be the subsidy which enables uh, the project to take off, because the planning gain on on agricultural land being converted for uh, housing is so enormous that it could give a huge subsidy and give some of, it, some of it to the landowner, but make most of it available for affordable housing so that you get a diversity of housing, diversity of um, products, uh, processing on the site, etc. I can't go into it now because I'm nearly, <laughs> nearly finished. So the, the, uh, the beneficiaries of this um, I was thinking, who will benefit from this apart from the people who take part? And of course, anybody who eats food will definitely benefit. And that does, it's pretty wide. And uh, nature is the other great benefit, beneficiary. So it is something which I hope that the people who wrote the DEFRA uh, report will th sit back and scratch their head and say, well, maybe, perhaps we missed a trick here. Maybe there is some opportunity to get farming involved in the countryside and food production and, and give people an opportunity for a happy life in a community. So we hope that perhaps it will take off. Anyway.